Okay, hi everyone uh, and welcome to a panel discussion on promoting India's artistic inspiration beyond COVID. Uh, we can all probably agree that the last two years have been absolutely challenging for all of humanity across the world, no matter where we are um, and no matter what we do really. Uh, but in times like these, one wonders what the role of an artist is, how the artist works around digital mediums, and how digitization sort of provides opportunities or challenges, uh, especially to a country like India, which has been known for its rich repositories of cultural heritage. Um, I think India's digitization process began a really long time ago in Salarja Museum, and a lot of uh, India's museums started to digitize their works. Um, However, uh, it was only during this time that we saw a lot of the public starting to access arts online. Uh, usually, this, I mean, even though our consumption around uh, everything else other than the arts has been online, this is not particularly something that we have considered um, in the past looking at art online or purchasing art online, creating art online learning about art online. So there have been so many different things that have happened um, in the past year. And I'm sure that uh, with a panel uh, like all of you here, that we are rich in experiences about the pandemic. That, I mean, and, and also, just, I'm curious to know this time, what are the things that have changed for you in your artistic practice? But also, what are the opportunities that you see going forward, um, assimilating all these learnings that we might have had in the past year and a half? So um, I'll, I'll probably, uh, for, for everyone who's joined us here today, uh, we're going to introduce each of the panelists, uh, hear from them, and then get into a Q&A, uh, going deeper into, uh, uh, deeper into their practice and their experiences with digital as a medium as well. So um, I'll begin with uh, Geeta. Uh, Gita has been uh, Gita is uh, an artist who has worked and has displayed her work across Europe, Asia. Uh, her experience in creating art using India's uh, literary heritage is phenomenal. I will let Gita take the floor, share a little more about her work and uh, her experience. And Gita, what has the last year, one and a half years, looked like for you? Hi, Midhavi. Well put, of course. And uh, I would begin with uh, my journey and I'll divide it into two parts of digitalization and the basic theme line that I have. Now, to begin with, I would say that I, I had my training and so on in art, of course. And then I tried to combine it with music right from the beginning. I had this in my mind that art doesn't have a language. It has a language of its own. It has a connect of its own, you know, so these are only different disciplines. So um, uh, now uh, I tried combining these all together and I did some research work, which is placed in archives as concrete poetry and various other experimentations. I, of course, uh, would rate it as a very, very devastating impact that this pandemic has had. And uh, it was very harsh, very unexpected. I view this as uh, at the same time. I view this as a that we have to rethink. It gave us a pause. It gave us time and space to reevaluate, to do some soul searching. That uh, we, are we forgetting our connect? Are we forgetting our connect to ourselves? Where are we headed? I mean, are we forgetting our connect with the cultural heritage, for example? Today, some of the unheard stories from our heritage can be connected to the viewer, as uh, Midhavi was saying, of with all the media and all digitalization and so on. Each, but I realized that each generation has, uh, in artists, have worked to interpret our heritage in their own way. For example, the Sufis, which are not bound in any ism. So I picked up Sufiana Kalam. They used verse. Okay. And subsequent generations gave music to those verse. Now I added personally some visual elements to the Sufiana Kalam and created paintings with calligraphy, uh, which is a Hindi Devnagri script. 
to convey the same thoughts and i can understand if someone wants to create a digital work in future the possibility is you know very much there let me share here one uh, very interesting uh, example from kabir who says kar ka man ka chhod kar man ka man ka phir now do not rotate the rosary which is outside it will be a futile exercise rather it will just be a process they would again that connect that i was talking about there won't be any connect do not rate it outside as a baseless activity rather move within yourself and review your purpose of being i have had some such creative interpretations for bullish and many others i tried working with upanishads i tried working with you know various all heritage stuff which i feel art is not something out there i feel it has to travel through an internal route and should possess a blessed transparency you know it's a it's a very layered process this creative interpretation in the true sense makes me the person that i am today yeah and uh, they are all calligraphed and that is how whenever i used to have exhibitions or shows across europe people would connect they will share their experiences and i was asked what is the source of inspiration which is a very very general question through for media i personally feel if i will be very honest this is your treasure when people connect they have their experience i think you've done the job otherwise there is a there, there is no coordination yeah so uh, it is uh, there could be a new technological innovations to convey some messages maybe virtual reality tomorrow who knows what else what what is vital is that these messages survive they thrive and are internalized that is my whole focus i mean i have also done which would probably interest professor uh, some um, exercises creative ability exercises program so that you can think how to how to from the beginning how to tell the student to uh, to how to think out of box how to think abstract you know some exercises so that when we develop ourselves finally we come to the actual world of you know you you art you are able to give something which is potentially very transparent and people can connect whether the uh, audience uses their ears eyes or their senses to internalize these messages maybe in future it will become more potent yeah and uh, then of course there are the digitalization one thing we've learned through pandemic is that the role of technology is going to be very important pivotal in showcasing art art magazines have gone digital binales art fairs museums exhibitions are being consumed online and uh, zoom blogs webinars are increasing the online shows are there and i feel that they would be there for some time in future as well now digitalization has democratized access to paintings and more importantly the thought behind them earlier these were limited to those who had access to the exhibition galleries and they would view in prestigious galleries uh, often in other parts of the world as well uh, today digitized content is available to anyone on a simple thing as smartphone you know for example when i found that some of my works have been used as research projects in us somebody has derived inspiration somebody has actually taken some plates and worked to support their you know uh, thesis or research work i uh, i i feel really glad that they have been used for research projects in us videos in russia digitized reproductions on products of daily use these are all implementations of the same design form or the same artwork yeah so i feel that is a strong need to give more emphasis to shared value system which is voiced by organized events as a co common platform now that we have uh, started this journey 
which is started by various uh, creative disciplines if we all put our heads together media museum artists you know and collectors it has to be a collective movement between the media museum and artist and then we can take it from there of course artists have to think again and plan again new strategies based on the situation that we are in but basically i my my take is that we have to zoom our heritage let's create a creative engagement that enables people to connect in the new ways yeah medhavi that's great to hear from you uh, geeta just continuing that conversation uh, manav i just like to move on to you you're an artist of, uh, you're a contemporary artist you worked with a wide variety of um, you know galleries collaborators i just want to understand also from you while you share your experiences that how do you think digital has changed public engagement for the artist uh, of course you uh, you know uh, do share about how it has impacted your artistic practice as well but going forward uh, how do you envision um, you know increasing access to digital technology playing a role in connecting the artist and his audience Thank you, Mehdi, and thank you, Geeta. First of all, and a very warm welcome, and a very warm heart to everybody. Um, first and foremost, I think uh, to be an artist is indeed, uh, you know, a blessing. I feel uh, because that is where the center of the being comes from, and the entire perspective, uh, whether digital or not, uh, you know, whether um, museum or not, or uh, you know, how I uh, have. I uh, lived my 25 year art practice as a museum laboratory as a uh, as a research practice you know that is um uh, more focused on the entire concept of uh, which which actually the topics does uh, so much justice to so let me just um, share and go on to the um, screen here because that would make uh, sense um and we can talk from here so all right so uh can you see the screen please everyone yeah are you able to see the screen yes yes okay so uh, you know when it says artistic practice artistic inspiration um uh, and um uh what is the pivotal role in engaging and educating communities um uh, so i would like to focus on what role can art play in instilling values across space and time you know uh, that is a very vital uh, component of my art practice and i see a very strong consonance with it so um, you know everything dies including the arts uh, but art is immortal it lives in the cosmic cycle in nature just like a day dies into night only to be reborn as a new child of the next cycle hence the artist is but an instrument of that design and that's why art is for the creation like what the universe does so if one turns this paradigm of the digital that we are discussing as one part of the entire theme um, you know and if you turn it upside down what if the digital perish or what if it changes into something else like we've got entities coming in now and there's so many changes happening you know every day change is the only constant but art lives on uh, the masters who lived before us inspire us so what is actually uh you know the the true uh take away as an artist when one is living the life uh of an artist as a practicing artist so i can share some experiences from this 25 year journey um beginning with the latest because you know that is that imbibes all that you've learned as in your research in your practice so i uh, you know over the last decade um for me the quest of seeking something which is not done so far of going beyond boundaries was important always and um, you know it came from uh, how i see nature as my guru as my as my teacher and i took uh, you know we all grown up with pottery and um, you know i took these elements of pottery elements of craft i took the earthen lamp um you know and i transformed it did a dusha on it inverted it into droplets of water 
and created the river. Now, uh, this is over the last decade where I saw that, you know, what can I bring uh, in my practice, which is new, which has not been tried earlier. So I uh, saw a very, you know, so, so my, film, my entire series called Excavations in Kims of Clay uh, draws its strength from the roots, from India's past, from India's Vedic scriptures, and from ancient civilizations. But it takes it beyond into a language which, which is contemporary, uh, addressing the avant-garde. And if one can transform whatever is the learnings of years and ages, and we can transform it into a language which is, uh, you know, interactive, which is uh, uh, so relevant in today's COVID times, uh, you know. Um, so how can we embrace architecture and open Silvan spaces? How can we go beyond the gallery space? How can we go amidst people? How can we mingle with people? You know, um, how can we bring people to our art? You know, that these were questions which um, came from an research practice, you know. So I got a lot of students. I've been always working with um, students and, you know, I've been um, uh, having dialogue with them. It is not important to just, uh, uh, you know, uh, just be out there and, you know, uh, try and establish um, your art. It is, I think, for me, most satisfying and rewarding when I can establish dialogues with different stakeholders of society and especially children, because children are uh, the future. And this, I think, is very relevant in today's times after the COVID has happened. Because how has uh, COVID changed our lives? I mean, as artists, we've always been in, indoors, in the studio, practicing, uh, you know, uh, uh, doing what we do. And then how do we um, take that practice, that take that those learnings into people? How can we make them a part of it? So uh, in terms of pottery, what I did was I took the urban lamp, inverted it. I took the film and made it into rain. And uh, for me, to embrace trees and to embrace uh, uh, nature was, uh, was uh, something which came from years of practice of treating nature as Mother Earth. And therefore, if we go back to this um, uh, etymology of how uh, my clay evolved, how my pottery evolved. Uh, you know, I was not a potter. I am an artist, and I believe that medium is not a restriction. So, um, digital offers fascinating experiences to try the new now. But if we can take our learnings of these years, for in my case, the 25 years since my first solo, and we can go out there and embrace architectural spaces, go and embrace nature. If we can go and bring people to come and light, because lighting of lamps were part of the several experiments that I did. Uh, you know, I invited people to come and light a lamp at the river. So this brought people to have a connect with the soul, and this brought people to come and mingle with, with the rain. Um, I embraced trees because, uh, you know, and these were Neem and Arjuna trees, which are medicinal properties. And these were across large acres of land. So as it is, public art in India has not developed. So I wanted to do work in the public art space after having done collaborative work, after having done, uh, you know, uh, uh, engagements and interdisciplinary practices. I wanted to bring all of it together, synergize, and then take it to a different dimension. And if one can, uh, if this is uh, an endeavor which people can draw from, uh, like uh, the kind of uh, learnings I had when I listened to students, when I was, uh, uh, you know, do, uh, exposing them to beehives, uh, with chillers. You know, how could invention and innovation uh, in art, uh, you know, be relevant to inventions of, um, outside art, uh, to in the corporate space, in the industrial space, in the, in the world stage? Um, you know, so I took a chillum and made it into beehives. I took chillum and made it into rain. I, I tried to make prototypes of museums in different spaces. Uh, museum in a mall, uh, you know, um, I turned what is, as it is existing in a very commercialized kind of space um, uh, with, with the top brands, I tried bringing in the very simple and prosaic and the very ordinary, like the pottery um, into beehives in the space of 
something which is so hip and uh, chic and you know uh, um, a, a space like a like a very prime museum so how can we engage uh, and open up and I, it was such a such a great experience to see how people um, embrace these you know it could have uh, i was studying fine line because coolers um, you know uh, urban cups and urban lamps and these are all part of india's uh, ethos um, i turned it i saw it as a cup of life you know how can a cup of life uh, talk about time so my time machine was about the entire ethos of taking time and seeing how we are so minuscule we don't even live a hundred years um, you know and uh, in that space uh, in the times of covid this realization is so so strong that you know we don't life is so fragile and what do we leave behind and we, we are not here artists can perish artist is not uh, the central focus here what is important is uh, what learnings can we take away from life and from this experience of covid and how can we translate that experience of how we saw people dying our own uh, you know families brothers sisters friends people from all countries perish you know that was so painful and how can we we understand and bring nurturing of the art uh, into uh, public space how can we tell them that we are all cups of life and what we give to 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 life is what we uh, take back from it so that is what i think is relevant in the context of uh, uh, covid in the context of uh, you know today's uh, uh, today's scenario so um, that i think was um, uh, was important um, can you see me back here yeah okay so i think that was um, an experience which really uh, moved me over 25 years Uh, it touched my lives because I was engaging with ordinary people, uh, you know, uh, with with people who are uh, uh, who who are not, uh, uh, you know, collectors. Um, uh, when you take it into public, we undermine the intelligence of people. So why collectors are collecting my works? Why Christie's and Barnes are auctioning my works? Why, um, you know, um, uh, uh, my work reaches uh, museums and it's displayed in museums? um uh, you know and it addresses uh, the 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 most esoteric of uh, uh, you know uh, most discerning of collectors what else is something that moves me what else is something that establishes a new dialogue especially in covid times you know how can art uh, play a role how can uh, when uh, you have these um, uh, uh, people who help uh, in in creating different um, uh, you know um the, the ordinary uh, day to day activities of lives when they come and say that uh, you know aapka to ye diya diye ko aise nadi mein badal sakte hain humne kabhi socha nahi you know so that kind of experiences and engagements give so much of satisfaction so i think that's the essence of my journey that how can uh, one take a broad spectrum from the uh, discerning collector to the masses and Uh, we do not undermine their intelligence, and uh, we bring together a cohesive experience. And what and how can art play a role in these COVID times and share these learnings amidst a larger audience? Thank you. Thank you, Manav. That was um, wonderful to hear. Um, but um, I think going forward, when we go into the Q and A, we are all very curious, especially about the last part that you mentioned. That you know, not to undermine the intelligence of the audience, taking it to a larger mass. Uh, I mean, taking it to the masses. Uh, how did digital? I mean, the growth of digital technology and the access to digital technology for everybody. Uh, Change this experience of yours. Were you able to translate your art's message through the through the medium? Was it challenging? We'd love to hear that as we go forward. Um, but uh, next, I'd like to invite Sahil. Um, Sahil uh, Arora is the founder of uh, Mumbai's Method Gallery, which is a contemporary art space um, that actually opened in Bombay just before the pandemic. If I'm not wrong, uh, Sahil, correct me if I'm wrong, please. Uh, but uh, which is why it's really exciting to hear uh, Sahil that as a founder of this kind of a, of a private space, uh, what were your challenges and how did I mean? 
did you use the time to pivot into a different business model or uh, did it offer for you a new set of opportunities uh, we'd love to hear from you so uh, the floor is all yours yeah you know i think um it's interesting to be having this conversation about the digitization of art um uh, i'm a little bit younger and not as experienced as the rest of the panel so for me um digital has been what i grew up with right as a medium as a tool as a piece of technology to create collaborate communicate um it's what i grew up with right so uh, for people in my generation which is people around the age of 30 and under um it wasn't as much of a forced acceptance of a new medium right and when we talk about method we did open about 6 months before the pandemic and um, really the primary reason we started method was uh the opposite of digitization we wanted to see works that we see on our computers on our phone screens uh we wanted to see them in scale in person uh in a physical medium because um i personally feel it's more engaging right uh, not to take away from digital i think um, digital is very much the tool of today right for whatever the medium might be uh but but yeah um we didn't really pivot away from what we started in fact we expanded the gallery size Uh, during lockdown, so we reopened with the physical space twice as big as it was. But but you know, I think um, when you speak about uh, digitization um, and let's say the digital era, uh, to me there's some distinction over there, right? Because uh, the digitization of art to me really is um, a process of archiving, cataloging um, works that have been created, right? So when um, you have Manav or um, Geeta over here, their work was created in a pre-digital era, like. thousands of artists before them right millions of artists before them and their works were inaccessible right when you talk about giant collections like big museums galleries um even private galleries like right like the broad in la which is one of my favorite galleries uh they opened up their collection digitized it during lockdown and it was amazing to see um you know high resolution images of works that you only heard about right to see it in or uh, different angles to see video versions of them to see like 360 degree walkthroughs of galleries right because physical spaces to experience art have been um uh, it's restrictive right um if i want to see works by rothko um maybe i can't go to the tate modern right maybe i can't get a digital walkthrough of it maybe i can't have a curator or a gallery speaking about it but digitization has allowed for that right uh, it's added a layer on top of hey here's the image So now there's a way to have a narrative to go with it as well, which I think is so important in presenting the story of the art, right? Uh, even when Manav speaks about his works, um, he's adding a new dimension to it, which I probably wouldn't have known unless I was on this call, which is a result of technology, right? I would have seen a photo and said, "Oh, these are cool cups placed in different places," but hearing the artist speak and kind of give his story of it to me also is a part of um, digitization. you know so so that's really um, interesting when it comes to works created let's say in an era where digital tools didn't exist right but obviously since pretty much the 90s digital tools for creation in some way have existed right they're a little bit easier now but i mean you still had people creating digital music in the late 80s you had people creating digital art whether it was with pixels powerpoint 8 bit video games or uh, to me it's all art right for me Uh, the first really experience of what i would call art was playing uh, tetris on my phone you know uh, or playing uh, the game boy on nintendo like playing mario uh, to me those were all works of art created in a digital medium um, so so i think that digitization which is important from an archival process from presenting a narrative and then obviously in today's era you have um, thousands millions of artists who never pick up a paint brush but directly go into their computer those you know and that's a form of digital creation and it makes collaboration so much easier right because you have collaborative tools um so creation has become digital collaboration has become digital and for the last 10 years for artists communication has become digital right because today you might have a work of art sitting in a museum in new york or london or san francisco but they have only 1000 people visiting the museum a day but the minute you put up a post on instagram you can reach a million of pe- millions of people right with that art so essentially you are kind of communicating um, your idea your take on the world around us your interpretation of an event as an artist with millions of people right and it, then it's not just about the visual arts it's not just about a painting it could be a piece of music like geeta said right uh, it could be poetry it could be like literature like there's 
just so many things like art encompasses multiple medias and multiple forms of creation right and i think what's interesting is one digital is kind of bringing them all together right because you have um collab like for an artist to collaborate say the musician has become so much easier right now you know one of the young artists who i really like is uh this guy shantanu hasrika right um he's uh, he originally is a doodler does a lot of digital work uh and he just collaborated with a rapper called hitwiz for his first nft right which became the fastest selling nft in the world now it's really cool to kind of see him work with another musician who's really popular with a generation younger than me now but to kind of present that and that's art that millions of young indians relate to right it's kind of taking away a certain layer of elitism as well right um, i think uh, geeta mentioned that art is becoming a little more democratic now and i think digital is allowing for that to happen it's saying that hey it doesn't matter um what you wear it doesn't matter where you're from it doesn't matter uh, what lineage or family heritage you come from these tools are making art equally accessible to anyone right um today if, if uh, let's say uh, sf moma is putting up a new show we are all stuck in bombay right so the lineage of manav geeta me makes it no different from the lineage of anyone else in the city to access the same works none of us can go to san francisco to see the new show right because we can't travel so we are all kind of forced to look at it so in a way there's i think a lot of interesting dimensions that digital brings and i think for a lot of people it's kind of a forced adoption like i try to resist digital as a medium for so long but now i don't have a choice right so i think in a way that's also going to be interesting just see what the naysayers what they do with um, digital as a tool from here on out and then obviously i think nfts um really showed only the sale that digital art like art created in a digital medium is kind of getting its view as well i mean probably the biggest sale of the year happened for a digital piece so yeah um, over to you and yeah. thanks sahil that was great to hear especially when because you sort of clarified that distinction between digitization and the era of digital right um i think uh, personal from personal experience of working with galleries and museums uh it's interesting to see that these also have a license implication a lot of times uh, when things are digitized archives etc are digitized uh, when they are published online it, that it has to have a certain license so that new creators are able to build on these works or uh, you know it has to specify whether they, it's only for viewing and not for downloading or recreating um, i think that's also another element another line of discussion that how do new uh, creators or curators sort of take this digitized artwork this digitized repository and build on it much like i think mana when geeta have built on a legacy of artists and stories especially i think in geeta's practice like she mentioned that there are influences of kabir poetry for example so when this all of this becomes accessible online when these books from libraries when this poetry when all of this becomes available online um especially in a in a creator economy that we are now starting to explore in india also this creator economy in india is of, of course rising so i think uh, it, it's really interesting to explore this with this panel as we go ahead uh, but before that i'd like to invite professor shiva kumar who is a professor at uh, vishwa bharti shanti niketan where he teaches art history he is an art historian and curator and has authored several books as well uh, so i think uh, your perspective is so different and special to this panel also sir so over to you and we are hoping to learn how how digital sort of made its way through the educational space so thank you medapi and uh, uh, geeta and manav and sahil have all i think told us some of the benefits of uh, the going digital during these last one and a half years and what uh, facilities it has opened up for us but uh, as somebody who has been teaching online for the last one and a half years i have a slightly different view of it i mean i'm completely totally in agreement with what they said but i am also aware of some of the difficulties we are facing and as teachers 
and our students are facing as learners. So, I mean, that is while going digital has allowed us to have conversations like this across long distances, view, I mean, exhibitions that is opening up elsewhere and so on. One of the problems that I have been seeing is the great digital divide that we have. Now, the resources is there, but to be really democratic, you need certain other things. Now, who can access these? And that availability of the resources across India is very, very uneven because I have students who are attending my classes from all over India, from cosmopolitan cities to very remote places. I mean, maybe in the Northeast, in other parts of India. So having a group of students from across India, I realized the accessibility they have even to internet is so varied. So many of them find it extremely difficult to even attend these classes. So that is the big digital divide we still have. And we have to overcome that if we want uh, people to use it and really make all this very democratic. That's one aspect. So whether those infrastructure that we need to I mean, access these digital resources, that's available. So somebody has to make that available. The second part is that the economic inequalities, even if this, uh, the internet is available, then there are other problems. So as somebody just said here, that maybe you can even see it on your mobile phone. So I realize many of my students are probably attending the classes and listening to me on the mobile phone. And when you teach art history, you cannot do without images. Normally in a class, I will be projecting slides on a large screen. I will be able to draw the attention to details and so on. Now what is happening when I do my projection, actually the viewer actually sees a miniaturized version. It shrinks. Mana was just showing us his work. It is a kind of immersive experience of the work that if I had gone to his exhibition and had, but that is reduced into a small image on my laptop. And suppose we imagine that we are viewing it on a mobile phone. We have distorted the experience totally. So what we get is uh, information saying, OK, there is such a work. But we are not having the experience of the work. So that this is one of the big problems that I have come to realize teaching over these two years. Some of these needs to be kind of thing. And I can see from whatever uh, circulars that the UGC has put out that they are planning to make digital a part of learning even after the pandemic, which is good in a sense. But then there are certain things that we have to address if it has to be successful. And here are there some issues which may not be relevant to the artist, but are relevant definitely to educators in the art. We already have some material online, which we call, I mean, MOOC. I mean, that is open online sources. Now, compared to what is there, I mean, other U countries have also tried this. Like, for instance, something like Coursera. If you compare the quality of material that's there, ours is extremely poor. So if you want to really improve education through this method, then we have to make sure the quality of material that we make available online should be of the finest quality. It should be done by the best experts in each field, which is what Coursera does. But 
if you compare that with what we produce, it is just the other way around. And this is a can be a disadvantage. Just imagine a college where you have extremely good faculty. Then they are going to have inferior quality teaching, even if they have very good faculty. So if you want to democratize, we should make sure that we democratize quality. So if you have the finest teachers delivering these lectures, and if it's made available across, I mean, all universities, colleges, and so on, then even students where you don't have good faculty can benefit from it. But if it's not done in that way, it will actually bring down the effect will be just the opposite. So I think there are things that we need to look into. Other things we said that, I mean, others have pointed out that many of the museums across the world in the West and in Asia very often, they have made their resources available. And very often they have made a lot of their resources available, not only to be viewed, but also to be downloaded, which then as teachers we use in the classes. But this has not happened in India. Our museums don't like to put their works online. And even if some of them have managed to do it through Google uh, Art and Culture program, we can't really download and use it in the class. And unless there is a program, the government, and I think, in fact, because it cannot be done entirely by the government, because it needs a lot of investment. And I hope that both the corporate sector and the government works together and make this available. And then all this digital resources and the way it can really improve education can work. It's not that it can't work. But it doesn't take away from classroom teaching, which is very important. One to one teaching is very important still because there are certain things you can only do in that way. But it can supplement and enrich that effort further. So that's what I have seen. Thank you, Professor Shiva Kumar. I cannot help but agree with you um, so strongly because uh, I think uh, uh, we, we've heard from everyone. I just want to add in a little bit of a backstory on what I went, why I started what I do. Um, so the Heritage Lab, which is a web platform, was literally born because of this uh, reason that you mentioned that India's museums don't put out things. What this does is two things um, to a lay person, um, especially like me who has not been involved with art. I'm not a creator. I'm not. I mean, I did an MBA, so I, I've been unrelated to the field of art. Um, but, but it was something that brought me to this field 10 years ago. There is a certain inhibition. You know, you you wonder whether you're wrong about an artwork or whether this place is for you, whether a gallery is for you, because everybody talks in a certain language, a certain, you know, there's an art language that a lot of people don't understand. So the heritage we just wanted to put our resources, our cultural heritage resources out there for school educators, for people who could use this to simplify, to talk, to create new stories. Uh, journalists who use, uh, you know, they put out stories without pictures, sometimes without high quality pictures. So that was the idea, really. Uh, what this brought us into and what it got me deeply involved with is this digitization process and especially bringing the world of Wikipedia together with institutions because believe it or not, Wikipedia gets out grants to institutions. Take it, digitize your work, put it on Wikimedia Commons. You don't even need like your own, you don't need to spend so much on your own server. You need to, you can just put it on Wikimedia Commons. Um, and from Wikimedia Commons, I mean, everybody can download it, right? And there's a certain license, like a Creative Commons license. So you know whether this is only for educational purpose or whether you can download it even for commercial purposes to remix, to sell, to print on a t-shirt, do whatever you want with it. Because I think the core idea is that cultural heritage belongs to all of us, right? Until we feel that ownership, how are we going to feel for a gallery for a museum or have that cultural ethos as we say you know i mean the country Absolutely. has to have that cultural ethos that 
that um, that habit of going to a museum or going to a gallery that oh there's a weekend show happening and whether it is a digital digitization i mean yeah i think digitization is important because from from a lot of point of views i think conservation education so many things are related to digitization uh, artists such as yourselves can use that material for so many things i know um, i'm very fond personally i'm very fond of neelima sheik's works and she uses different artworks to weave stories um, and that is because a lot of the artworks are also open access you can see in sheba chachi's uh, photo installations she has used different uh, indian artworks from the welcome collection or different places so i think it's also about india making its cultural heritage available to people to leverage further because we can't do all the marketing ourselves we can't put it out there everywhere we need others to come in to use it to build on that creative economy we need people like app creators um, styles doing wonderful work with method also i think uh, there's a method magazine also sahil i heard so I, i'm not sure but I, i think there are so many synergies one builds across and as professor seva kumar rightly mentioned that there is this need for the digital skills gap that we realized is very prominent because we realized that when there is a digital skill gap when people talk about digitization or making an ar or a vr professionals of the field are sometimes like okay where are we supposed to do something what are we supposed to do how are we supposed to allocate a budget because and and that is why i think that the next generation being educated in terms of digital is so important also so i'd just like to hear from you all as we open the floor to everybody um, what are your hopes from digital skills learning and uh, this environment that we are going into now where digital has become prominent uh, if the government is placing importance on it and saying that yes this needs to be taught there is a there is a you know there's a certain um, there's a certain validation that, that this is going to be the way forward also um, so how do you all see this impacting your mm -hmm. art practice in the future hi dananjay hi <laughs> i was facing some difficulty to join but anyhow <laughs> i'm late yes. to so no, please feel free to join in this discussion though okay uh, please see anybody to take on the floor and uh, just okay. maybe i will kind of to because some some yeah. of what you said actually relates to the problem of education so this is what exactly what we need i mean something like the uh, wikipedia commons now i'm especially concerned because the digital availability of resources can bring in a big distortion to our cultural scene now for instance if things from across the world is available to young artists and young students but our ancient resources of india is not available then you can see that they are going to have a completely different view of the world so it is very important for us as a nation to put our resources there rather than think that we have to safeguard it we have to put in the lock and key and make it difficult for people to see now that seems to be our notion that's an old idea that when as a researcher i went to people they always think that if they allowed me to photograph the uniqueness of their work goes away so it was so difficult to get collectors to allow me to photograph objects but they wouldn't realize that when they are discussed when they are kind of thing it gets into circulation it becomes part of the cultural heritage and the value goes up so if you want our art traditional arts to impact our cultural production in the future we have to bring it out this is something that most countries in the world have realized so it's a shame that i have to go to an american museum to see indian art but i can't walk into the space the website of the indian museum or the national museum and see all the resources that they have and it can change the way we do things like as an ang scholar i wanted to work on indian miniatures 
But I very soon realized that I don't have access to museum collections. It is extremely difficult unless you have the right introductions, the right godfathers, you can't access these collections. You can't see them. Even if, it's, if you are going to study and add to the knowledge that we have. So obviously I had to move away to other areas where I have access. So we are in a sense denying the growth of knowledge about our own cultures by not being open. So I think this is something that, I mean, all the powers that be need to realize that if we want our culture to add to the thought of the inner people, it sh they should make it accessible that like all the rest of the world is making it accessible. So I hope that, I mean, I mean, everybody who can do that, I mean, we need resources. Now, all that resources cannot come from the government alone. That is where, I mean, the private sector should come Indeed. in and collaborate. Uh, yeah, into. And I think that is something that needs to take this way. And it should not be behind paywalls. Then we can't democratize this. There is some private enterprise trying to do this, but unfortunately it is behind paywalls. Then again, the economic power of the user becomes important. So we don't democratize it. Yes. Yeah. So if you want to democratize education, knowledge and make it accessible, and that is the possibility that digitization can do, then we also need to put a lot of it outside the paywall. And that is an important thing. And that is where the Wikipedia Commons, I think, plays a good role. Okay. Absolutely. I'm also going to wait for everybody else's inputs. But yeah, I think it's also, uh, I think platforms like Wikimedia also allow for other volunteers to come in and help institutions so that itself creates a sort of um, involvement with the larger public to come engage. Um, I, I know that it's not just for cultural heritage institutions, but also for contemporary art uh, and artists that uh, we and I'm just curious that uh, if we spot your work, for instance, Gita Manav Dhanajay at, um, at say an art fair or a gallery and we photograph that like a high resolution picture of it, because these days our cameras, phone cameras allow us to do that. And we put it up on a Wikimedia Commons. And now because I own the digital right to having taken that picture, um, how do you feel about it being available to everybody? Do you feel excited at the prospect that it's going to reach everywhere or does it uh, ring alarm bells that this can be copied this can be printed without your permission this is your hard work that has gone in um, these fears are pretty prominent in the um, art circle so what are your views that you know going forward as everybody is going to have these digital devices with them uh, just as a closing, maybe I think uh, we are out of time. As I got a message, yes, but, yes, 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 yes. Yeah. sorry, those sorry. who are copying are copying, anyways. You yeah. know, so uh, for an artist who's working very hard to create something intrinsic, you yes. know, uh, uh, that is a problem that one is facing in any case. You know, yes. uh, it's being copied rampantly, and uh, digital or not digital. This is uh, a different aspect. It's about ethics. It's about yeah. whether you want to be an artist or whether you want to copy work. Okay. You know, so, uh, so that is a so there are different dialogues. I mean, there are some very valid points that Professor Shivakumar, uh, Sahil, Gita, I mean, everybody raised, and you, you, you're doing some wonderful work on the digital yes. space uh, yourself, Medhavi. And you know, so it is people like you all, I mean, Sahil, Medhavi, I and mean, y'all uh, are taking uh, what we are doing as artists into a space which is which opens up uh, you know uh, 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 expo in engagement interactions but again professor shivakumar mentioned a very important point uh, just like other divides existing outside the digital space there is the digital divide where um, you know it's it depends whether you have a big screen i mean uh, for instance I can never show and never translate the experience that uh, what so many, uh, I had a hundred thousand footfalls at many of my public art installations, but that experience I cannot show digitally. You know, it's a, it's an immersive experience as Dr. Professor Shivakman mentioned. So uh, 
that to translate you know if you can have now we have technology but yeah again, it's mere physical experience it's not that physical. it's not the real thing you know unless you do it but yes. the greater yes. need is that all the products that we were designing for fashion designers and pottery also doing books for children you know for that matter or you're making paintings and all these common things put together now at least the opening is there and you have to put it there i mean you you can't survive without it you know you have to pass it on to the next generation the responsibility partly is ours that at least they'll be better informed i feel they have more resources they're more alive you see yeah. of course he is absolutely correct i mean the actual feel of an art piece is when you look at it next to it when you stand and you obviously it is it is different but i mean that is where we are i mean if we have the resources like professor says that private sector can intervene and you know they can put in <coughs> people should come forward the horizon is unlimited i i personally feel that we are the blessed ones to you know put everything together of course the experience is going to be different but at least that's possible you know <laughs> putting things together yeah so i think uh, yeah yeah i think yeah, yeah. also for right. experimental growth it is a must because yeah. if, you, if you do it to an extent then the other person can take it forward you know so i mean those who have to copy as uh, he puts it those who have to copy they have their own route you see so let them continue i mean your creative head would always give you a, the impulse to do what is next you know right dhananjay you were saying something yeah. i think uh, art is a high value uh, things and buyer should be uh, i think why buyer want to <clears throat> get information uh, prior to buy something on online to trace an art work so, suppose some some buyer are interested in a particular artist and they want it to they want to get to know about more about the artist and their previous works so it's it gives it gives an opportunity to you know explore the uh, online about an artist works and their history and their you know uh, uh, association prior association with uh, other things and uh, certainly it, uh, it, it for an artist it is uh, very helpful uh, nowadays to connect with uh, buyers with uh, galleries with uh, so many other people because in a very short time they make uh, um, they get more information about this thing and and <clears throat> we all are active online so we can trace easily what is uh what is the original piece and what is a uh, copy so most of them i, I can uh, i can 